It's the preaching moment. I want you to get your Bibles and I want you to go to the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 10. We have been for the past few weeks as we entered into this brand new year, looking at the parables of Jesus. And last week we began in John chapter 10 and what a time we had, what a time I had in the studying and in the preparing of the sermon, what a time I had in the delivering of the sermon, and I certainly you had a time in receiving what thus said the Lord. We began in John chapter 10 last week, uh, dealing with Jesus and the fact that he said uh, that, that my sheep know my voice <laughs> and another they will not follow. We, 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 we talked about the fact that he is our shepherd. And the sermon was entitled, The Voice of the Shepherd, that, that you, as a Christian, need to know the voice of the shepherd. I'm going to leave it alone. I don't want to get back to it because if I start talking about it again, I'm going to slip back into it because it was so much in my spirit. This week, I want to begin at verse number 7, Gospel of St. John, chapter 10, beginning at verse 7. Reading through verse 10, I want you to follow along with me as I read, and then we're going to jump in to see what thus said the Lord. Chapter 10, verse 7 of the Gospel of John says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Tenth verse, the thief cometh but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Oh, my goodness. So so let's let's jump in. To this text and the subject this morning last week was the the voice of the shepherd today subject is the value of the shepherd the value of the shepherd bow your heads be father bless this word and charge it with your power and even though we're in a different situation this morning we pray that your anointing will flow in this place through these lenses into every device wherever people are watching in jesus name Amen. So Jesus is talking to thousands of people. I told you that he is he's a rock star. He is he is famous. He is being followed and thronged by people for all manner of reasons. And he is sharing with them about being the shepherd. And he talks that, that my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. Verse 6 says, uh, this parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. In other words, they didn't get it. And that's the purpose of the parable. It is an earthly story with an earthly meaning, but connected to it, parallel to it, alongside of it, there is a spiritual meaning that if you don't have spiritual eyes or your spiritual understanding has not been opened, you only get the physical or the earthly story or the earthly meaning. But, but, but Jesus has uh, alongside the earthly meaning in this parable a spiritual meaning. They didn't get it, verse 6 tells us. So in verse 7 he goes on, he says, I am the door of the sheep. Now we need to pause here for a moment. This is major. If you know anything about the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John contains what's called the seven I am's of Jesus. And when you hear I am, those of us that are Bible students and have studied the scriptures a little bit, we get excited because whenever you hear Jesus say I am, it is both prophetic, but it's also historic because it, it idles back to when Moses was standing before the burning bush and God was calling him to deliver Israel. And, and Moses says, who shall I say sent me? And God said, tell them that I am sent you. So Jesus is always very, very uh, on purpose when he uses the term I am. And in the Gospel of John, he says, I am uh, seven times. First of all, he says, I am the bread of life. Then he says, I am the light 
of the world. Then he says, I am the door, which is our text. Later on in our text for next week, he says, I am the good shepherd. Then he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Then he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he says, I am the true vine. All of these I am statements, if, if you want to do some extra credit work to study the I am's of Jesus, they're an amazing amalgamation of, of truths that, that he presents to us that we find in the gospel of John. This I am, he says, I am the door. Look, I am the door of the sheep. Now you have to understand, I showed you the picture last week. They're going to put it up again on the screen of the sheepfold because we are not farmers. We don't understand the, the, the whole concept of the sheepfold. But you must know that those in the first century got it. So here, so here is the sheepfold where, where different farmers or, 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 or different shepherds would bring their sheep. Um, sometimes if, if it was a small sheepfold, it would belong to one shepherd. But usually they were large in, enough to hold many different sheep. And, and usually there would be a porter or a doorman or, or hired hand who would spend the night uh, watching the sheep. But sometimes, sometimes, given whatever situation might be going on, sometimes the shepherd would not be able to find a porter or find a hireling. And sometimes the shepherd himself would be the door. Mm. If you're looking at the picture, if you look down, you see that there is a man in the doorway. That is the shepherd. The shepherd understands, if I can't find anyone to guard the sheep at night, I am going to be there. And Jesus gives us a new picture of himself. Yes, he is the shepherd, but he is also the door. My Lord, I want to just give God a shout of praise right there. He himself is the door. Just like later on, he himself would become the sacrifice. He himself, the Lord himself, he comes and sits at the door. He is at the door and, and, and that speaks volume. Let, let's, let's talk a little bit. What, what does a door do? A door gives entrance and exit. A door gives access and egress. A door allows you to go in and out. So when Jesus says, I am the door, he is being very clear that I am the one who comes in between what's outside for the sheep and what's inside for the sheep. Now, notice he says, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door of the sheep. And then he says, uh, all that came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Now, let me deal with this very quickly. Please understand that Jesus is, is painting a picture that everyone around him listening would understand that, that there are people who desire to steal sheep. Mm. There are people who desire to steal the sheep, whether they are stealing it for the wool or they're stealing it for, for the meat. There, there, there are people who, who, for whom the shepherd must protect the sheep because these people do not mean the sheep any good. He says they're thieves and robbers. These are two different classifications. Thieves are one that will, that, 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 that will take it, but they will not necessarily accost you for it, whereas robbers are the ones who will be brazen. You know, there are two types of people in the world. They're the underhanded people and the overt people, the ones who, who, who do things in a, in, in a surreptitious way, and you might not even know what they're doing. And then there are others who are bold face. And, and these are both represented in thieves, and robbers. Uh, uh, as, as, as a preacher, one of the things that jumps out to me when I think about thieves and robbers, my mind goes immediately to the book of Malachi, where in talking about the tithe, uh, the scripture says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. And ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offering? Notice, it doesn't say, will a man be a thief to God, which, which is the underhanded. You know, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to do it in, in, in a backwards way. I'm, I'm, I know it's wrong, so I'm going to kind of be, 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 be surreptitious about it. No, the scripture says, will a man rob God? Will, robbery has to do with being in your face. Even in our legal system, there's a difference between burglary, 
thievery and robbery, which is where you come and you accost somebody and you threaten them. And the scripture says, will you threaten God by taking what belongs to him when you don't pay your tithes? I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not talking about tithing today. I'm not talking about tithing. But I'm just saying the idea of a robber, the idea of someone who will, who will be brazen enough to take, and that's what the shepherd is there for, to protect the sheep from both the surreptitious and the brazen, from the covert and the overt. It doesn't matter which way you come, you're still, you're still coming to harm the sheep. And the shepherd is in the door to say, no, 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 you cannot do that. And he says, all that came before me, lean in and listen. In other words, in other words, there were before Jesus false shepherds and false prophets and false messiahs. You need to understand that. Whatever God does that is genuine, there are always counterfeits. The devil always sends counterfeit because for most people who do not know, they will accept the counterfeit as if it is the genuine. Think about counterfeit money. There are people who are trained who can look at a bill and from the the look of it, from the touch of it, from the feel of it, they could say, no, no, that, that, that's counterfeit. Then there are many others who will take that bill and not know. So, so it is possible for, for something to be counterfeit, and yet me, many people don't know that it's counterfeit. And, and Jesus says, and the history of, of first century um, Judaism says that there were many false messiahs, many false prophets, many false shepherds, many false teachers who came and they came trying to, to, to steal the flock. But Jesus says the sheep would not hear them. Again, that goes back to the example I showed you last week of, of the shepherd calling. When the shepherd calls, th th there is a certain sound that, that the sheep hear, the voice of the shepherd. And so Jesus said they wouldn't hear them. But then he says, verse, verse 9, and, and, and this is getting good. He says, I am the door. I am the door. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, he is our door. He, if something is getting to you, it's because he has allowed it in. And just like he's allowed it in, he will allow it to come out. Whatever's going on in your life, my God, I feel prophetic right now for somebody. Whatever's going on in your life, it didn't surprise the Lord. Remember, you are in the hollow of his hand. Here's another, another illustration. You're in the hollow of his hand. And, and if, it, if, it's, if it's got to you, it's because he knows it's best for you. I want to speak to somebody right now who's in the middle of a difficult situation. I want to tell you that your shepherd is at the door. Mm. Your shepherd is at the door the door your shepherd if it's if it's gotten into the sheep pen where you are it's because he's let it in for your good now it might not seem that way at the moment but i dare you to look back over your life for things you thought that weren't good and you realize later oh my goodness if that hadn't happened i would not have made this move and then i would not have had this happen and so i am thankful like david says uh, later on in life, it was good for me to be afflicted. Why? Because I know that I'm in the hand of a loving God. I know that I am under the care of a, of a loving shepherd who is the door. And if anything got through him, it's because he has allowed it. Because in the long run, this is going to bless me. In the long run, this is going to help me. In the long run, this is going to move me to my purpose. Somebody listen to me. What you you're going through right now it might be difficult but when you come out you are going to thank God because he's going to bring you into brighter pastures my lord Douglas don't go too far just just understand that he is the door he guards your life somebody give him praise right now for guarding your life put your hands together and give him praise tell him thank you for guarding my life he is not only your shepherd he is also the door he is going to make sure that no matter what happens you are going to come out of this better it might hurt right now but it's going to help in the long run somebody shout amen Mm, my Lord, I feel the anointing right now. 
He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Now, I got to deal with this. Right now, we're coming again to one of those portions of Scripture where non-believers and people of different religions say that we Christians are narrow-minded. We are not narrow-minded. Here's your answer to them. We are biblically-minded. As in some of the other I am's, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Here he says, I am the door. And it, by, if you're going to be saved by me, you have to come through. My goodness. Those who come through me will be saved. Lead in and listen. If you are saved today, it's because you came through Jesus. It's not your works, not your abilities. Not your pedigree, not your money, not your good looks, not your intellect. It is through Jesus. And if you are not saved right now, it is easy to become saved. All you have to do is come through Jesus. Now, now notice again, th th this is a clear statement from him. He says, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. In other words, I am, I am the door, or in some translations, it says, I am the gate. Those that come through me will be saved. There's only one way to God. Somebody say amen. There's only one way to God. You got to come through Jesus. You have to come. He is the door. To salvation. He's not only the door to the sheep or the door to the sheepfold. He is the door to salvation. In no other name can men be saved but through the name of Jesus. There is no other access to God but through Jesus. Listen to me again. There is no other access to God but through Jesus. And if you can understand that, it, it brings a comfort to your heart because we are not saved by anything we do. We are not saved by anything we accomplish. We are saved because of the accomplished work of Jesus on Calvary and we have to come through him. Him, my God, I almost feel like shouting here in this place. I want you to understand that it is through Jesus. My God, somebody say Jesus. It is through Jesus. Somebody say Jesus again. It is through Jesus that we are saved. Our salvation comes from him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus It's all about Jesus. The fact that he is the shepherd, yes, but he is also the door. He is the door to our salvation. And all of us, every man and woman, every boy and girl who will accept Jesus will be saved. Somebody say hallelujah. Please understand. You know, I, 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 was, I was doing some studying and, and a lot of times people say things like, you know, um, I I I I want to I want to go to heaven. I I I, I want to go to heaven. But, but 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 what do you mean that 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 there's only one way? And 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 the response is very simple. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son Jesus, who came into the world, lived among us, and then died for us. And all we have to do. Is believe on him. Please understand, you do not go to hell because of the things you have done in life. Lean in and listen. You don't go to hell because of the things you have done in life. There's only one reason anyone would go to hell. One reason alone. They don't believe in Jesus. Let, 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 let me say that. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. I want you to get this. Hell is not the place for people who've done wrong, who've not gotten it right, who've made mistakes. I want to tell you, heaven is going to be filled with people who've not done right, not done it well, got things wrong. Heaven will be filled with people like that. It is not your wrong or your sin that condemns you to hell. It is your not believing in Jesus. The only thing that gets you into hell is the fact that you did not believe 
Jesus, that you thought that there was another way, that you thought your works were good enough, that you thought the things you have done or your character or your niceness was enough. Listen, hell is not reserved for people who've messed up. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all messed up. The only difference between the people in heaven and the people in hell is what did you believe about Jesus? My brother and my sister, somebody who might be watching right now and you're not saved and you thought, you thought, well, well, I've done to it. No, 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 no. The, the, the only thing that condemns people to hell is that they don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. That they don't believe that Jesus died for their sins. That they don't believe that he rose again and that he's coming one more time to take us to himself. What you believe about Jesus is the most important thing in your entire life because it affects your life now and your life to come. Jesus makes it very clear. He says, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. My Lord, I just want to take a moment and say to everyone who is saved, you want to rejoice for that point. That ought to be something even on this snowy Sunday morning, even on this cold, frigid Sunday morning, even on this Sunday morning when we're not gathered together physically and we're only connected virtually. I want you to understand that we have something to give God praise for. We have come through the door. We have come through Jesus and we are saved. Somebody put your finger in your chest and say, I am saved. Give God a praise because you are saved. And if you are watching and you are not saved or you are not sure that you're saved or you used to be saved or you're kind of saved, right now in the middle of this sermon, I'm going to stop and I'm going to tell you right now, this is the moment for you to be saved. Right now, I want you to confess with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord. I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead. I ask you Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I accept you today as my personal savior. And I thank you for saving me. My God, saints, wherever you are, begin to praise God. By faith, I'm believing that some people have accepted the Lord right now. By faith, I'm believing that someone who was teeter-tottering at the point of conversion has come all the way. By faith, I believe that there's somebody in this city, nation, or maybe even another part of the world who has made this point. Listen, I want you, we're going to put the church's number up. I want you to reach out to us. We're going to put the church's website up. Reach out to us. Let us know so we can contact you because Listen, there is no other way. There is no other way. I, I can't say it any other way. My heart is full because, listen to me, the reason the Lord leaves the church here is so we can let people know you need to be saved. You need to be saved. But being saved is found in a person who who, if you believe in him, will forgive you of your sins and do more than that. Look at the text. He says, if you'll be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. That is powerful. He says, when you become saved, now I'll go back to the, to the sheepfold. He says, when you become saved, you now have access to, to, to being able to go in and out. Now, it doesn't mean in and out of salvation. It means in and out of the sheepfold. It, it, it doesn't mean you, you're saved today and not saved tomorrow. No, that, that's false teaching. It means once you are saved, you now have access to the sheepfold and can go in for protection and come out for provision. Think again of the parable. Everyone would understand this. The sheepfold come in, they come into the sheepfold and they come in at night for protection. But then they go out of the sheepfold in for the day to find pasture and to find protection. They go in to, to, be, to, to be 
to rest and and recuperate and they go out to be refreshed so so there is the in and out not of salvation but of the sheepfold and you're going in and out and and he is the door so you go in for your for your protection you come out for your provision you go in for your rest you come out for refreshing you go in to the fold but you go out to the field are you with me you go in at night. You come out during the day. You, so this is designed to let you know that, 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 that he, he's there with you wherever you are. Because if you're in, he's the door. When you're out, he's the shepherd that's leading you. My God in Zion, I want to shout for that. He is always with you. That's why he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Can I tell you something? Mm. I hear you, Lord. I hear you. I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but let me remind you. He will never leave you or forsake you. People will leave you. Listen, listen. Loved ones will leave you. Friends will leave you. People who said that they will never leave, they will leave you. That's how life works operates at times and it is hurtful and painful but can I tell you something that you can bet your life on and even more importantly he has bet his life on it he will never leave you or forsake you listen to me lean in and listen he your God your Savior your Shepherd he who is the door will never leave you or forsake you when you go into the fold He's there with you. When you come out to go and pasture, he is there with you. What does the word pasture mean? He will take you and feed you and supply and make sure you have what you need. I want to tell somebody right now who is in the midst of something and, 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 and you have a great need. Maybe it's a financial need or maybe it's the need of a, of, of a new job. I, mm, I hear you, Lord. Maybe it's, it's the need of something that's almost, almost unspeakable. I hear the Lord saying, I am about to meet your need. Ooh, who's got the faith to believe it? Who's got the faith to praise him with me for that? I am about to meet your need because he wants you to understand whether your need is in or out, in the fold or out in the field, wherever it is, I will not leave you or forsake you. I will meet your need. The old saints used to say, he is a need meter, my God. God in Zion. He is a need meter. He is able to meet your need. Now unto him who is able to, to supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Let your faith stretch out. My God, I feel it in the, in the, in the spirit. Let your faith stretch out right now as you understand that whether you are in or out, in the sheepfold or out in the field, in the church or out in the world, wherever you are, he he is there with you. Wherever you are, he is covering you. He's protecting you. He's watching for you. He will not allow the thief or the robber to do anything to you. You, my brother, you, my sister, are covered mm, by this, this great loving shepherd who is going to make sure that whether you're in or out, you have his protection you have his provision you have his rest his refreshing you have all that you need he is with you whether you're in the sheepfold or out in the field he is going to watch over you somebody put your hands together and give him praise for that right now who hallelujah and then that gets us Mm, mm. That gets us to the tenth verse. Mm. Now, I, I, I will tell you, as a preacher, I've got to try to calm down. That's a good thing. I don't have I don't have uh, the organ with me. I'm gonna try to calm down because this is powerful right here. It is in conclusion to him talking about being the door and the fact that. The thief and the robber can't get to you because he's the door that he now speaks to us about the value of the shepherd. Now, it's already uh, been established he's valuable because he's going to protect you. 
But he says something in the 10th verse that just, you know, what is value? Value is how important or how precious something is to you. All of us have in our lives things that are more valuable than others. All of us have in our lives an understanding of, of priority and a, 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 a list of, well, this is more important or more valuable than that. What is the value of the shepherd? Look at verse number 10 and y'all pray for me that I can get to this. He says, the thief, Barry, he's back again now. The thief, when he comes, he comes but for to steal, to kill, or to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. In other words, he says, listen to me, listen to me. He says, when the thief comes, the, the thief has a purpose. It is, it is first of all, to steal. Th there are some people, there are some things that are going on in your life or trying to get to you and it's coming to steal from you. Steal your joy, steal your peace, steal your position, steal what God has for you, steal your future, your destiny. Listen to me. This word is so critical. He wants you to understand. See, what most believers don't understand and don't get is that we are always in a fight. The devil is always coming after us. He's always coming after us because he wants to separate us from the Lord. And he comes to steal, to steal. What does he want to steal? Does he want to steal your car? No, the devil doesn't drive. So he's not trying to steal your car. Does he want to steal your job? No, the devil doesn't want to work where you work. Does he want to steal your money? No, the devil doesn't spend the U.S. dollar. But he attacks those things. He comes to steal those things because what he's really after is your faith. You are in a faith faith fight it's your faith and the devil is coming there's somebody in who's watching right now the enemy has been coming after you to steal from you be careful you are not a willing participant in the steal my god at, at the risk of sounding republican stop the steal <laughs> don't don't allow the devil to steal from you because notice jesus is that's his first purpose his first purpose is to steal from you. Why? Because if he steals what belongs to you, it, it hurts you. It's, it's, it's going to destroy you. It's, it's going to torture you. Please understand the enemy is a torturer. The scripture calls him a tormentor. Mm. The devil is a tormentor. So the first thing he wants to do is not to kill you. The first thing he wants to do is to torment you. And he wants to torment you by stealing what belongs to you. And there's some people watching right now. My God, I see you in the spirit. I see you in the spirit. The enemy is trying to steal from you that which belongs to you. Don't you dare allow him. Now, understand Jesus is giving us the, 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 the 411. This is what he wants to do, to steal what is already yours. Mm. Uh, uh, he wants to come into your camp and steal what is yours. But Jesus says, no, don't allow him to do that because that is his main purpose. The thief cometh to steal, to steal. And if he can steal from you, it lessens you. Think about, think about if you've ever been robbed or if you've ever had your home burglarized, if you've ever come home and seen that things that you treasured were taken, mm, Mm. It does something to you. Right now, as I'm speaking to people to who, who've had that happen, it you can go right back to that moment when you opened the door and saw that, that somebody, a thief, had been into your home and stolen your stuff. Or, or if you were ever accosted and robbed, you're, you're right back there. You can remember that moment. And when somebody steals from you and takes what is yours, there is a anger there is a frustration and 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 that's what the enemy wants to do my god he wants to steal your joy he wants to steal your faith he wants to steal your belief in the future he wants to steal your commitment to the lord there are some things he wants to steal there's some things he wants to steal in the natural my god i hear you there's some things he wants to steal from you do not allow the enemy to steal what god has given you do not allow the enemy to steal what god has blessed you with stand firm do not allow the enemy to steal that is his first 
first goal to steal because if he steals, he hurts you. If he steals, he diminishes you. If he steals, he, he frustrates you. He angers you. And, and, and you're going to have to deal for a long time with that. You never forget. You never fully forget when something has been taken from you. You worked hard for it. You've been through hell and back for it. And now the enemy comes to steal it. Don't let him steal. Again, I say to you, stop the steal. And, and then he says, if, if, if he can't steal, then he wants to kill. He wants to kill my Lord. He wants to kill. He wants to kill. Why? Because if he can kill you, now you can no longer be used by the Lord. My God, somebody, I'm talking to you. If he can kill you, he can stop your earthly ministry. He will stop your earthly influence. He will stop the things that you can do. Let me tell you something. There, there are some things that only you can do. You are unique in your, in your design. You are a designer's original. You are unique. There are people you can connect with that I can't connect with. There are people that, that, that when you speak or when you do, they respond because the, these people have been hotwired by God for you. Please understand that you just can't plug one person out and plug another person in. It doesn't work like that. And, and so the devil, if he can't steal from you, then he wants to kill you. Because when he kills you, he stops what, what, what God was going to do in you in the future. The people that you were going to witness to, the people you're going to encourage, the people you're going to love, the, the ministry that you were going to do. Please understand, it's not about the job you in your future or how much money. You, no, 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 no. The devil doesn't care about that. He cares about how much your life is going to impact his demonic kingdom. How much your life and your words and your love and the things that you do are going to impact people and bring them out of his kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light. So if he can't steal from you and stop you by stealing, then he wants to kill you. There are some of you watching right now, my God, who know there have been times the devil has tried to kill you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. There have been times, whether it's a car accident or, or some kind of other accident or a medical issue or, or something happened. That there have been times over your life, I've told you there have been about three times in my life where the devil tried to kill me. The day I was born, he tried to kill me, tried to have me bleed out because he knew there was something about this young child that was going to impact the kingdom of God and by, by, by virtue impact the kingdom of darkness and pull people out. And the, the, the people that have been saved under my ministry, the people that have been developed and nurtured under my ministry, the people that have been blessed and strengthened under my ministry, if he would have stopped me at the day I was born, it would have affected. Now, God is sovereign, but there's certain things and certain people that God uses to to bring you mild god i feel the anointing right now and so if he can't steal from you he will seek to kill you and why would he want to kill you because he will stop the future work that god has for you lean in and listen there is work for you to do mm, i want to say that again in the midst of this pandemic in the midst of this 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 difficult time that we are all going through when we are still not sure of the future i'm telling you there is work for you to do there is something dare i say there are some things that god has put in you some of them mm, i hear you jesus some of them are, have not yet come some of them are like a time release capsule. So there's some things in you and ministries in you that you may have never thought of, but in this year, I told you, this is a year of divine disruption. This is a year of divine disruption and God is getting ready to disrupt for some of you because there's some things in you that you have not even thought of or some things in you that you have forgotten. There's some things in you that you have not thought much about in the last five or 10 years. But hear the word of the Lord. He is about to, to rekindle a fire. Mm, mm, mm. That's the value of the shepherd because he's going to make sure that the devil doesn't steal and he's going to make sure the devil doesn't kill because there's some things that he wants to do. Let me finish before I go on. And the final thing he comes to steal 
to kill or to destroy. If he can't kill you, he wants to destroy you. My God, my God, he wants to destroy you, to ruin you. But I hear the voice of the Savior, my Lord. He is not going to be able to ruin you. Lean in and listen. Somebody, right now, you're living under a threat. Mm. Mm. You're living under a threat of ruination. <laughs> I'm not even sure that's a word, but I'm preaching it anyway. That you're living under a threat of ruin. That, that, that somebody or something is trying to ruin you. But hear the word of the Lord. You have a shepherd. And the value of the shepherd is that even though the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy... The value of having the shepherd on your side is that that will not be your final story. That will not be your epitaph. That will not be your benediction. No, you have a shepherd. And the value of the shepherd is that he says, I am come. My God, I don't care why the thief comes. I am come. It doesn't matter what the thief has come to do. I am come. He says, I am come that they might have life. First thing, he's come to give you life. He's come to give you life. Somebody in here, I want to speak life into you. Somebody who is watching, I want to speak life into you. This word has come so that life can be spoken. Some of you have been dealing with some dead things, but the value of the shepherd is that the shepherd comes and brings new life. I decree over your life, over your situation, over your problems, new life my god that's why he says i came i came that you might have life that in spite of what things are coming your way in spite of what the devil is sending your way in spite of what people have tried to do i want to tell you life is your portion Mm, and not just life, that you might have life more abundantly. The, the word there abundantly means that have life in surplus. I want to say to somebody who right now, you are just getting by. You have just enough. God says, I'm about to bless you with more than enough. This word, listen to me, listen to me. The word announces the change. When you're going through life, that's why having a good pastor or preacher is so critical. Because God sends a prophetic word word, a prophetic release, a prophetic uh, a, a, a dynamic release into your situation because the word announces the change. And the Lord told me to tell you that, that, that here is the value of having a good shepherd. He has come that you might have life and not just regular life, not just ordinary life, not just a, a, a minuscule life, but he's come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. The word there is the word that has to do with surplus, that God wants to give you a surplus of life, a surplus of blessing, a surplus of help, a surplus of guidance, a surplus of joy, a surplus of winning, a surplus of victory. My God, somebody put your hands together and tell them thank you for the abundance. Thank you for the abundance. Thank you for the increase. I decree over you increase. And that is why having the shepherd in your life is so valuable. The value of the shepherd is what he brings to you. My God, God, he does three things, and then I'm going to close. First, I told you, began, he guards you. He guards you. So he guards you, and because he's the door, he guards you and makes sure that you're covered and protected. Second of all, he, he is genuine because he is he is there he's not the false voices that have come before he's not the false uh, messiahs that have come before he is genuine so he guards you and he is genuine my god i hear you listen to me jesus is the real deal mm, mm. jesus is the real deal the whole bunch of 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 pretenders to the throne but jesus is the real deal as, as our shepherd, here is his value to us. He guards us. Not only does he guard us, but then he is genuine for us. You can trust him because he is genuine. He is the God that cannot lie. Everything he says is true. Whatever he has spoken will 
come to pass. So that's the value of the shepherd, that he guards us. He, 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 he is genuine. And the third and final thing is that he is the giver of the abundant life. That he is the giver of the abundant life. Listen to me, somebody right now, I don't know where you are, but you've been living beneath your privilege. Mm, you've been living beneath your privilege. You have not been living the life that God has for you for whatever reason. I hear you, Lord, because some of you felt I've, I've done some things in the past. I, I've, I've made some mistakes. There, there's some things I've done that, 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 that I, don't, I don't feel that, that, that I should be blessed. Listen to me. That devil is a liar. He has come to steal your joy. He's come to steal your future. He's come to steal what God has for you. So I want to tell you, this is your release today. Today, I release you to begin living the abundant life. Today, I release you to begin enjoying the abundant life. Today, I command you, in the name of Jesus, this is the value of the shepherd. He is the giver of the abundant life, a life of surplus. My God, is there anybody who, under the sound of my voice, who is listening, who wants surplus? If you are, lift your hand. I know I can't see you but he can see you lift your hand if you want surplus lift your hand if you want increase lift you your hand if you want multiplication of blessings and opportunity lift your hand i came to tell you that this word is the release you need this morning this word is a release of what you need for this week this word is a release of what you need for this new month that we're about to go and hear the word of the lord the value of the shepherd is to guard you the value of the shepherd is to be genuine but then the value of the shepherd is to give you life more abundantly. Is there anybody who will throw up their hands and give him praise for the abundant life? Come on, do it now. Give him praise for the for the for the life that is full of surplus. I'm talking to somebody. Shanda Nodabosa. Praise him while I'm talking. Praise him. I'm, I'm getting a download from the Lord. He says, I'm coming in, I'm coming in, and I'm gonna take your not enough and make it more than enough. If you have the faith, tell him thank you. I'm going to take your little and make it much. If you have the faith, tell him thank you. I'm going to take what you don't have. I'm going to take your nothing and make it into something. If you have the faith, tell him thank you. I need everybody under the sound of my voice. Give God praise now. Mm. Whew. Okay. Whew. The value of the shepherd. The value of the shepherd. He guards us. He's the door. He is genuine. He's not like the false shepherds and the false prophets and the false messiahs that have come before. And here's the big thing. He is the giver of the abundant life. I thank God for the shepherd. I thank God for Jesus, the lover of my soul. Jesus, my Lord, my Savior. And I want you to know, I want you to know, as I, as I close, I want you to know mm, that as you tap in, to the value of the shepherd. As the abundant life, the door to the abundant life, is open to you. As you walk through this door, whether you go in or out, the abundance is going to go with you. Wherever you go, not only is he with you, but this life, this abundant life that he brings, that he gives to you, is going to go with you wherever you go. Listen to me. I release into you today the quiet assurance that the shepherd is the door of your life. That he guards you. Man, that that he is genuine 
anything he said to you, you can trust. You can build your life on him. And third of all, that life that you build on him, he is going to make it a life of surplus. I have come, he says, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Bob your heads with me. Father, I've given them your word. I've shared with them what you gave me. I've told them what you told me to tell them. My prayer now is that they will comprehend the value of living life with the shepherd. They will comprehend and understand how important it is that you, the Lord, is our shepherd. You are our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for being our door. Thank you for being our guard. Thank you for being genuine. And thank you for being the giver of the abundant life. Bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.